and I'm here today to show you some boxes that I'm making I'm actually making these for my booth at our quilt show I got a table and so I am going to attempt to sell some greeting cards and so I am making some boxes for people that purchase four or more cards they will get a box and my box looks like this this is my first box that I made and I cut it with just plain paper and so I didn't like it plain although this paper has some shimmer on it I'm not sure if it will show up here it's getting a shadow but it has some shimmer in the paper and I went ahead and cut one of the tab covers to give it a little bit more color and I'll talk about that in just a minute but I just wanted to do a quick intro and so I'm going to aim the camera down so I can show you what you need to make this project so I've already been working on these so I kind of have a messy work area but I just wanted to show you what it is that I'm doing I am actually using a die that's made by scrapbooking made simple and it's called simply refined moments to memory contour plus die the number is 53133 and i actually purchased this online and just a tip whenever you're ordering from scrapbooking made simple they are have a huge following on youtube so your order will take six weeks to two months for you to receive it although they are a u.s based company i think they're stationed somewhere out of california but this die set contains 24 dies and i've had this for a while ordered it a long time ago and then it took a while for it to come and then i wasn't able to use it right away so it's got quite a few dies on here but this is the die that actually cuts the box and I can use all of these other dies to actually decorate the box you can decorate your flaps you got these two here then you can also decorate the back of the box you can decorate the sides of the block of the box as well and then you've got some different ways that you can put closure tabs on here so little banner things are on here so they have actually everything included and so this is what I will be using when I go to die cut and I will talk more about this later. For your information, something else that goes with this die is a decorative tab folder and it just has some additional things that you can use. I also purchased this at the same time and it's a complement to this die set and it's the Moments to Memory Butterfly Moments Index Cards and the number on this is 5136 and it has six dies in here but I won't be using this at all today. Now when I made my plain box I actually used this top flap just to add some color here but I didn't want to do a whole lot of work for something that I was actually giving away for free so what I did was I got a pad of paper uh, it's a actually a pad of cardstock it's not actually paper weight so it's cardstock weight and so I used it and just pulled out some of the paper from here So I cut quite a few of those and what you also need to have is some sort of Teflon tool for folding pressing folded paper it's I have a bone and it's actually Teflon this particular one that I have you're also going to need some kind of adhesive you can use score tape you can also use your very tacky glue guns if you have them but they need to be permanent and it needs to be one that's going to adhere very well if you don't want to use those you can use any manner of liquid adhesive you can use Aileen's clear tacky glue or you can use Tombow multi liquid glue mono multi liquid glue so just some adhesive you can decide when I first started making these 
I had actually used Velcro for my closure and I used the glue gun and it did not stick down it wouldn't stay so every time I opened and closed it would come back up so I ended up using some of the Tombow glue to hold that and so since that I don't want to use glue because then I have to wait for it to dry and I'm trying to do these as quickly as possible so that's why I opted to use my I'm going to show you what I ended up using I changed the whole plan so first off I'm going to take you to my die cutting area because I just want you to see how this particular shape is die cut. So I am actually using the Spellbinders Grand Caliber machine to cut and it's made for basically for cutting paper crafting but you can cut more than paper with it. So the reason why I had to use my 12 by 12 cardstock is because the 8.5 by 11 was too small for the length. So what I did was I cut my 12 inch cardstock into an 8 and 1 quarter by 12 inch piece. And I found that I could actually cut two pieces at one time. So that's what we're going to do. So I just stack my two pieces with the grand caliber. You need to have a base plate to cut. And then I will place my die face down. And then you need a base plate and I will place it on top without moving my die around. Hold all three pieces. I'm going to bring in the machine. The reason why I had to cut it into an eight and a half inch or less width is because that's the width that this machine will take. So now I just put it in, get it started and crank it through. And I just wanted to show you that sometimes if you're just cutting a very simple shape that you do not have to just cut one piece of paper at a time that you can actually cut two pieces or sometimes more at a time. So this is cardstock. If it had been paper, I probably could cut more, although I wouldn't be using this as a paper. So here are my two pieces cut and they are actually scored and I will see if I can show you that in the other room. Okay. So I have my pieces here and I think you can see the score lines. The nice thing about the die is that it cuts as well as give you your score lines. So, so the first thing that I do is I score on all of these lines. So I just fold it up. So then once I have it scored, I flip it back to the right side and I actually want to add glue on this side flap here and on this end flap, just this little piece here. So that's the two places on both sides of this box that I want to put adhesive. And again, you can use your choice of adhesive, but I'm just going to go ahead and use my little mini glue gun here. So now I just want you to see that I have adhesive that is off of the flap. It's actually overlapping. And I just take my finger, push that back to where I want adhesive. And then that way I won't have to worry about my card sticking on the inside. But I do go over just a little bit so that I can make sure that my card's going to stay. So now that I've got the adhesive on the box, I start with my flap. I want to put this flap right inside of this score line here. This is the actual edge of the box. So I want to make sure that that is sticking in the right place. So I just stick that and I have something that looks like that with the sticky flap still hanging up. 
I'll go to the other side and do the exact same thing. So now I have both sides and I am actually pressing that together with my hand. And now I'll go ahead and just lay this flap down. So let me see if I can zoom you in. So now I have the sticky adhesive up here. And so I just want to hold that box where I want it and then press it down. And then I put my hand inside to actually press it closed. And I'm going to go and do the same thing on the other side. I think I put this one in a little too far. Fold the flap down. So here's the box now. And like I said, I had to use glue to actually close the box when it flipped down. And I didn't want to spend time waiting for that to dry. So I opted for a different plan. So let me show you what I came up with. I actually made a belly band. And I could use some of the decorative elements if I was not in a rush. When I make these for a gift, I am actually going to decorate this little area with the to and from or a title of greeting cards or birthday cards or something like that when I do that. But I actually made this little belly band that slides on and off the box. And then I can place in four cards and four envelopes. So how did I do that? So I will now pick a band for my box because I just pre-cut some bands. All I did was took the leftover paper that I had from each box I cut and I cut them into three quarter inches wide. So I have quite a few different ones here. And I will just pick one to coordinate with my box. So this will look okay on the box. It has a few speckles of orange. This one has a little bit of orange. This one is more green. So I just decide which one I want to put on my box. And I think I'm just going to go with the lighter one for right now. So if we're going to score, you could use a ruler and score. But I've decided to use my score from, or any score will work, any paper trimmer. And you do need to have one that you can extend the arm out because you're going to need a measurement as large as 11 inches in the end. Okay, so I'm trying to make sure my score is in the window. So what I want to do, this is the end of my strip and I'm going to be cutting off the final inch. So I want to make sure that I don't have this white piece that was from the book that I cut out showing. I'm hoping it would show you that, but it's white up at the top for like a half inch. So I don't want that in my box. So the first thing that I need to score is at three and one quarter inches. So again, make sure you have your scorer blade and not your cutting blade. So we're gonna score at three and one fourth. Next, we're going to score at four inches. The next is eight and five eighths of an inch. And then our last score is at nine and three eighths. Now we're gonna move down to 11 inches and we are actually going to use our cut blade to cut. So this is what I have cut off the paper. And we're now through with the scoreboard. And so again, you can take your boner or you can just fold these on the score lines. And your top edge 
that's the longest piece with the three and one quarter that's actually going to go on top of your smaller piece so your where your first score was three and one quarter you want that on top so all I had to do was take my adhesive within that first quarter of an inch put some adhesive down fold it over and then I put my longer piece on top and press down for a seam. So because I have those score lines, my paper will fold exactly on the corners of the box that I just made. And then you can put your belly band on and then it can be removed as needed to get the greeting cards out. And this just makes a nice little gift box, I think. So, um, as I said, I'm going to be making these empty. And then as people purchase four cards or more, they can select which box they like. So, I'll just show you some of the ones that I have made. I don't have the belly bands made. I just have some of the box folded. So, I'll just show you a few. Here's one here so it has a record on it this was more this pack ended up uh, catering more to music enthusiasts so let me see if I can find one that's rock related so here's one I'm not sure if the camera is picking up because it's silver and it's metallic -y as well but it's actually has guitars with the words rock music has stars and music notes as well and let's see if I can get one more this one here actually has the words punk bass roll music and some other things that I'm sure I'm not finding on here electric so it's more of a music lovers paper pad but I just wanted to use something to make some quick boxes so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you will try some of the simply refined dies this is the only die set that I have from them but um, she makes excellent videos so if you go to her YouTube page scrapbooking made simple you can google this and see what else she made with this there are so many different possibilities I'm just showing you the very basic box and I did not go back and watch the video this is just what's working for me to get it done very quick so I will see you in my next video bye bye